Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of I Watched Dune Last Night, and it's all I can think about. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, it's time to push some shit again. Not like out into the toilet, but like chemically push some film. Pushing film is a very popular process used by many photographers, not digital photographers, to create a certain look with their images. In general, I've never really been much of a hoe for pushing film, not the YouTube channel. I am actually quite a hoe for that. I guess I just never really understood the appeal of pushing your film when you could just shoot it at box speed and then add the resulting effects like contrast in post. But little did I realize the dumbassery of my ways. There is a monumental difference between digital contrast and chemical contrast. I've never pushed Ilford HP5 before, but the hype around it was too hard to ignore. I decided I would push a couple of rolls of 35mm HP5 two stops, aka the Matt Day Special. HP5 has kind of fallen out of my graces lately because I found a new lover in the form of Kodak T-Max 400. But is it possible it's time for me to relapse on HP5? Let's find out. A lot of you are already probably pretty familiar with what it means to push or pull your film, but for all the newbies out there, too bad, I'm not gonna explain it, you're f***ed. All right, here it goes. To put it in simple terms, pushing your film is when you shoot at a higher ISO than box speed, which results in underexposure, and then overdevelop your film to compensate for the underexposure. The effect typically results in more contrast, more grain, and more pain. But there ain't no grain without pain. It's a look that is very, very cool for black and white film. But for color film, you can start to get color shifts if you go too far. But how far is too far? I'd recommend you have an open and honest talk with your lab technician. I find that a lot of relationships are easier with open communication, strict boundaries, and a safe word. But speaking of labs, the dark room was forming the collab of the century with beers and cameras, and they invited me along for the festivities. I was super excited to hang out with Phil, Trev, Juan, and Caleb, and just shoot the shit about film cameras. Needless to say though, Baxter was not amused that I'd be leaving without him. After loading the Leica M6 with the freshest roll of HP5 that I could find, I headed down to the Apocalypse Now hellhole that is currently downtown LA. Our first stop would be the King of Burgers. That's right, in and out But this was no ordinary in and out This in and out was right next to LAX and featured a bunch of landing planes flying overhead which of course was a solid photo opportunity. Unfortunately, someone's car had broken down on the way to work. Since the car was small and old, the three of us figured that with enough gusto, we could get behind it and collectively take some photos. As I said before, in order to set up your film to be pushed, you need to underexpose. Because I'm pushing two stops, I would need to underexpose by two stops. The easiest way to do this is to take your light meter and just set the ISO to something that's two stops more sensitive. For example, Ilford HP5 is 400 ISO at box speed, so to push it two stops and underexpose it two stops, I would set the meter to 1600 ISO. Now you might be screaming at your computer screen, phone screen, Coachella hologram, whatever you're watching this on in whatever year you're in, about the fact that LA is bright and sunny literally forever. Why the hell would you shoot at 1600 ISO in a place that gets 12 minutes of clouds every year? I don't know, it's for demonstrative purposes. In the chariot up to the Getty Museum, I thought it might be a good time to swap out the 35 millimeter Sumacron for the 12 millimeter Voigtlander. The architecture of the Getty is something to behold for sure. I found that the leading lines and curves really played well with the grainy black and white look of pushed HP5. Though, it was incredibly bright and reflective there so I was shooting at max shutter speed and f16. Basically everything from the dust on my lens to the distant spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy was in focus.
upon further investigation of these images, it seems that they have a lot of grain, more grain than grains of sand in the movie Dune. After getting kicked out of the Getty for not knowing anything about art, we headed to the hotel. While in the hotel lobby, I realized not only that the hotel's theme was that it couldn't decide on a theme, but I also realized that HP5 at 1600 is perfect for indoor scenes which might provide significantly less light. Like these shots. But more importantly, this shot. Which is definitely one of my favorites because the contrast is simply on point. Before we headed to the Beers and Cameras event, we were talking a bit and Trev brought up a good point about how I was incorrectly calling it the Eastern Sierras, when it should correctly be called the Eastern Sierra. After feeling some pretty deep ancestral shame, I was on a mission to get something back against Trev, something that he couldn't possibly see coming. So when he whipped out the Contax T2 that night, I had to upstage him with the superior optical quality, mechanical perfection, and James Bond swagger of the Budweiser camera. Anyway, I didn't get any b-roll of the event, but it was really awesome to meet everyone at Beers and Cameras. It was a pretty big hit, as recognized by my hangover the next day. So it might be worth noting that if you accidentally underexpose your images, you can't magically save them by pushing your film. The same way that undercooking a turkey and then jamming the bastard in the microwave won't save Thanksgiving. I actually really dig this shot. I think it's the kind of shot that would only really work with high contrast. It was here in my scanning process that I realized that maybe, just maybe, pushed HP5 is kind of the jam. But speaking of things that are the jam, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you looking for an easy way to display your beautiful photography? An easy way to show your work to your parents, coworkers, or even all your high school teachers who said that you were a total failure of the modern educational system? Well then look no further. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform designed to help you create a beautiful website with ease. If website building isn't your forte, worry not. Squarespace offers 24-7 customer support and even features an online forum for anyone to seek help for specific inquiries regarding your website. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So is pushing HP5 two stops that so Raven or not that so Raven? I think it is that so Raven. Having an image come through the scanner and Negative Lab Pro with the contrast already dialed in is kind of amazing. All I have to do is bump the sharpness and crop the image, which is perfect because less work means I can get drunk and watch Dune on repeat all night and practice my Tibetan throat singing at 3 a.m. You have something in your hair. Am I beautiful now? It was dog poop. <laughs> I can't imagine that pushing HP5 further to three stops would yield very positive results. In fact, 
they'll be negative. Crazy smart and good ass jokes aside, I think pushing HP5 two stops is the perfect amount. The grain flourishes to the point that it almost kind of looks like you took your latest banger on a piece of high grit sandpaper. This is definitely a look that I'm going to use the crap out of in the future, though now I am personally conflicted between the two powerhouse black and white films. The fine detail and grainless rendering of T-Max 400 or the grainy sex appeal of HP5. Perhaps different film stocks are called for in different situations. I don't know. What I do know is that I had a blast meeting everyone and it's important to experiment with film photography because you never know what you might get. I mean, from personal experience, most of the time it'll be crap, but every once in a while, it'll change the way you shoot and that's a good thing. So have you pushed HP5 two stops before? If you have, what'd you think? But more importantly, what'd you think of Dune?